The holiday season generally represents a time for family, friends, laughter, and overall joy. However, for a 17-year-old girl named Juliana Kopka, this was not the case. On December 24, 1971, Juliana and her mother would board Lanza Flight 508 en route to see her father. She was excited. She had just received her high school diploma the day before and had dreams to study zoology. Little did they know, when they boarded that flight, her fate would be changed forever. This is her story. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel where we cover all tragic and terror stories. So if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, plus ring the notification bell to be notified of all new uploads. And, as always, viewer discretion is advised. Born on October 10th, 1954, Juliana would spend most of her earlier years of life dictated by her parents as they were famous zoologists in Peru. This was not a bad thing for her as she had much of the same interest her parents had. She quickly developed a love for nature and animals by a young age as she was heavily influenced by her surroundings. In 1968, Hans Wilhelm Kupka and Maria von Mikhailix Radeka would take their daughter Juliana and move from Lima, the capital of Peru, to an abandoned patch of jungle located in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Juliana, only being 14 at the time, struggled with leaving her classmates and friends behind. But her parents were famous scientists and zoologists with a goal of documenting and studying plants and animals. So the family packed their bags and left. Much to Juliana's surprise, their new home was like an image from a movie. It was gorgeous. The wooden hut where they would sleep was not special, but the hut was located next to a river with a canopy of fruit all around them. When the trees were in bloom, there was nowhere she would rather be. Education was very important in the Kopka household. Juliana would learn basic survival skills as her parents would instill this knowledge early. She understood that the rainforest was deadly and had to be treated with respect. The more time she spent there, the more time she learned, and by the time that she was 17, she had a basic understanding of how to survive on her own with nothing but her bare hands. However, being in the jungle did not exclude her from her schoolwork either. She would receive classwork by mail and be homeschooled by her parents. But after two years, educational authorities would demand to Juliana's parents that she continue her schooling back in Lima. Because of this, Juliana and her mother would fly back and forth between Lima and Pucalpa, living on and off their small hut. Only an hour-long flight on average, a trip they had made multiple times before. Juliana and her mother stayed in Lima, so close to the holidays, so that she could receive her high school diploma. She graduated on December 23rd and was excited to continue the next stages of her life with her parents. Hans, Juliana's father, had warned them not to book a flight with a shady airline company named Linnaeus Edias, but her mother had no other option if they wanted to fly to see Hans the next day. So she booked the flight, disregarding that any negative thing could happen. I mean, come on, what could really go wrong? Lanza Flight 508 would only have a flight scheduled time for an hour. This was a plane that was not large, but also not small. It could fit up to 86 passengers. When Juliana and her mother boarded, they quickly stowed away their bags and found empty seats near the back of the plane. Juliana would sit in a seat labeled 19F. Now it's unclear her exact position, but I believe it was a window seat. The plane ride started off smoothly. You could see the canopy of trees littering the ground below them. Juliana thought they looked just like broccoli from above. The sky got darker with each passing minute, a worrying sign to the passengers, but they continued forward as the captain had deadlines to meet and places to be. Juliana could hear loud thunder close as she sat anxiously counting the minutes by. The plane had started to experience turbulence. A quick jolt here, another one there her heart skipping a beat with each drop. Black clouds obscured their view as flashes of lightning provided the only reprieve from the dark, illuminating the sky for a brief second, then darkness again. 
With each passing light, the faces of the passengers were illuminated in the dark, confirming that everyone felt the same. True fear. The plane had flown straight into the middle of a thunderstorm. Understand, in 1971, technology was not as advanced as it is today. With that advancement brought an understanding of weather that was unknown at the time. Their predictive measures were not nearly as competent compared to today. The plane shook violently as bags from overhead fell on the seated passengers. Juliana recalls hearing her mother say, I hope this goes all right, while the plane continued to jerk in all directions. She tried to remain calm, but deep down, she was panicking. At this moment, Juliana watched in horror as a lightning bolt struck the plane's right wing, damaging the engine. Time slowed as one could hear the screams of other passengers praying, pleading for their lives. Her mother next to her whispered, now it's all over. Her ears rang from the constant screams all around her, combined with the screeching noise of sheer destruction, and then a strong pull, and silence. She looked around and could not believe what she saw. Black clouds circled her as she was still strapped in her plane seat, but the plane was not under her. Somehow it was gone. And at the time, she couldn't understand. She only understood she was falling and fast. The trees under her moved closer and closer as she... Everything went black. She had lost consciousness. Once Juliana came to, her head was pounding in pain. It was apparent she had suffered a concussion from the impact. She was dizzy and could only really see out of one eye at the moment. On top of that, her glasses were lost, which was a problem because Juliana was nearsighted. But she was still able to make out that she had landed in the middle of the jungle, although she had no idea how she got there. There was a deep gash on her arm and left calf, but she had hardly noticed it as her entire body ached. She would spend the next day and a half falling in and out of consciousness before she was finally able to move. It was later discovered that she had broken her collarbone, torn her ACL in her knee, and partially fractured her shin. Juliana had just survived an almost 2 mile or 3.2 kilometer straight freefall to the ground. Her seat had spun in circles, slowing her descent almost like a makeshift parachute, although this was not enough to slow her down significantly. But the canopy of trees and plants that littered the jungle floor was enough. It was a miracle. Around 18 or 19 hours after the crash, Juliana would finally regain consciousness and have enough strength to move. She slowly got her bearings and immediately thought of her mom. Due to her injuries, she could not move efficiently, but nonetheless remembered her training and knew she had to do something. Staying in the same location in this jungle was death. Nobody, nobody would be able to find her. It's important to note that at the time of the crash, it was during the wet season for the rainforest. This would mean that there would be no fruit or berries to feast off of. On top of that, most plants would be moist or just constantly wet. This is the perfect environment for insects like mosquitoes to thrive. This was not the only danger though, as there was plenty of poisonous animals and plants that littered the jungle floor. But all of this Juliana knew and was very familiar with. To make matters worse, she did not have any tools to help cut plants or to keep insects away. In fact, all she had was the clothing on her body, which was a torn dress, one sandal to protect herself, and a working watch, which told her it was about 9 a.m. It also didn't help that it had constantly been raining since the crash, making the jungle muddy. Surprisingly, Juliana was not scared, but instead felt a strong feeling of abandonment and helplessness. She began to crawl on all fours around her crash location, searching for anything. Occasionally, Juliana would call out for her mother, or really just anyone, but every time was the same. No answer. During this search of the crash site, she spotted her mother's seat. Bubbling with nervousness on what she would find, she crawled closer for a look. But the seat was empty, and there was no sight of her mother around. Her heart dropped. 
Juliana was trying to be realistic with herself and begin to accept that her mother might be gone, but she couldn't help but hold out hope as her mother was not in her seat. Eventually, Juliana did manage to spot a small creek that flows downstream. Just like the flowing water next to her, she felt a wave of relief wash over her with this discovery. In this moment, she could hear her father's voice talking to her, almost like he was there, telling her to follow the water if you're ever lost in the jungle. So, that's exactly what she did. Eventually, Juliana was finally able to stand on her own. Each step brought pain, although the more she walked, the easier it became. She would trek through the jungle, sometimes swimming, sometimes walking, but always moving forward, one step after another. Juliana knew it was dangerous to walk along the ground with her feet exposed, so she threw her sandal in front of her as a way to alert any hidden creatures on the ground, and after confirming it was safe, only then would she move forward, a meticulous task but one that would protect her. Each day as she went along, the little creek of water being followed gradually increased in size. Finally, on the fourth day of Juliana's trek, she spotted a row of chairs. She felt a burning desire to investigate as these chairs were familiar. They were from the plane. Juliana moved closer and closer only to realize that the chairs were actually flipped upside down. And to her horror, there were three bodies still attached, but had landed head first, two males and one female. Her heart pounded out of her chest as she anticipated seeing her mother. Once she had moved close enough to touch the chairs, Juliana grabbed a stick and slowly poked away to remove the woman's shoes. She was looking for a way to identify the body to see if it was her mother. With her shoe removed, Juliana let out a sigh. The woman in front of her had painted toenails, something her mother would never do. With renewed energy, Juliana took a look around this newly found crash site. Luckily, she found a bag of candy, which she quickly ate, only leaving a few pieces for later. And after eating, she noticed how thirsty she was, which she resolved by slowly drinking lingering water off of plant leaves that were familiar to her. It was around this time that Juliana heard a buzzing noise. The sky was blocked off from the trees, but it was unmistakable. There was a sound above her. The realization of what it was hit her like a ton of bricks. It was a plane looking for the crash site. And for the first time since the accident, she felt hope, but that was quickly diminished as reality set in. The plane could not locate her or the crash. There was too much obscuring the view from above. At the time, the search rescue conducted was the largest in Peru's history. Helicopters and planes searched for days, but they never found anything that resulted from their efforts. So, feeling hopeless but encouraged with newfound energy, Juliana continued through the jungle, walking while deadly animals lurked around her. She would occasionally hide under bushes to avoid being bitten by insects. The cuts that covered her body were getting worse. She knew it would take a toll on her energy, meaning the longer she was lost, the higher the chance of infection. To make matters worse, flies began landing on Juliana's cuts to lay eggs. She could only watch in disgust, as there was no way to prevent this from happening. It only added to the deep down fuel of emotion to survive. So on she went, continuing to follow the water. After six days of living in this horror, Juliana heard a familiar sound which brought on a feeling of hope. It was a bird's call she was very familiar with, and it came from a species called a hotsin. This bird only nested near open bodies of water. The same birds lived near her old isolated home, which brought back a flood of happy memories from Juliana. She was overwhelmed with joy for a brief moment, all of her concerns falling away. After nine total days since the crash, she could clearly see the water she had been following was now a small river, and it wasn't slowing down, only continuing to grow. She felt anticipation, as she knew she was nearing an opening in the jungle. Juliana knew that the larger bodies of water meant a higher chance of finding civilization. This was her chance, and she would not let it slip away. However, as the river widened, plant density increased making it harder and harder to follow on land. Juliana left with no other option, continued forward, wading through the water. 
keeping a close eye on what's in front of her to avoid any deadly creatures lurking below. Only to add to her pain, the sun was blistering hot as the river exposed Juliana's to its wrath which caused the skin on her back to chafe and bleed as it had been burnt so badly from the sun. Out of breath and out of energy, Juliana took another step forward and saw it, an opening in the jungle. Her eyes widened as she realized what she was looking at. There was a small boat next to the river. Confused, she approached it. She had to be dreaming. There was no way that this was real, but as she got closer and closer, the boat was still there. She couldn't believe it. It really was there. Not wanting to hop in the boat and leave, Juliana took a quick look around and noticed a small hut with palm trees. Enthusiastically, she practically ran over to the location or ran as best as she could. But when she looked inside, there was nobody. All there was was a small can of gasoline. Remembering a trick she had seen from her father, Juliana poured gasoline over her wounds and winced as maggots crawled out of her cuts, desperately trying to escape. Exhausted, she laid down to sleep. Realizing the ground was too solid to get comfortable, Juliana moved to the riverbank for the night. Sometime the next morning, she was awoken by rain, and as she made her way to the small hut for shelter, she spotted some frogs hopping around. She was starving, but also too exhausted to capture one. In the end, this benefited her, as it was later discovered these frogs were poisonous. Juliana began to plan her next steps as she sat in the small shelter, trying to convince herself it was going to be okay. Yet she was still alone. Later that night, she remained in the hut when suddenly there was a sound. Bushes rustling near her, a voice in the wind. No? That actually wasn't a voice, or was it? At that moment, three lumberjacks emerged from the rainforest. They were laughing and conversing as they suddenly saw a woman standing alone in their hut, covered in mud. Her skin was peeling, yet she had a beauty to her. They thought she was a goddess. She would tell her story to the trio as they gave her basic first aid. They were amazed occasionally letting out a gasp in response. It had gotten too dark to move, so the plan was to rest the night and take Juliana by boat into town tomorrow. The following day, all four of them loaded up in the small boat and rode seven hours downstream to a lumber station. A local pilot immediately flew her to a hospital in Pucalpa. One day after arriving at the hospital, Juliana and her father were reunited. A wordless exchange. Her father embraced her, never wanting to let her go again. As many as 14 other passengers were thought to have survived the fall due to their location. Interesting enough, it was later learned that Juliana's mother happened to be one of those 14. Although out of 92 passengers, only Juliana would walk out of the jungle alive. She would later lead authorities to the crash site location. And on January 12, 1972, Juliana's mother was found. This story is nothing short of incredible. A tragic incident to all those that lost their lives boarding lands of Flight 508. But also a story of a miracle so unheard of that at first I did not believe it myself. The story is dedicated to all the loved ones and family members that were affected. If you would like to know more, please buy Juliana's amazing book, When I Fell from the Sky, where she recounts her story. You will not be disappointed. Please also take the time to learn more about Amazon rainforest deforestation and how it is impacting our environment. We must do a better job at taking care of our planet. We only get one. If you can help in any ways, please see the description for more information.